Bonsoir, guys, c'est Sam d'être du Québec avec mon boy Osaïs de Basic News. Ce soir, on a l'exclusivité d'interviewer le seul et unique Willy. On y va? Let's do it! What is up, everybody? My name is Zayas, here live at Il Sonic with the one and only Willie. What up? How was your back-to-back -back tonight with Sullivan King? It was great. It was like 10 minutes ago, and uh, it couldn't have gone any smoother for the amount of planning we did. It like went beyond expectations. Yeah. Um, I think we both have a pretty big catalog of music now, because we've been, I guess, doing this for like five, six years. So when we first started doing it together, it was like, a lot more planning went into it, but now we're just like, let's just freestyle, have fun, let's play all our hits, and like, it just went perfect. It was, couldn't go any better. That's amazing. As well, I, I gotta be honest with you, we've been actually walking around the crowd and we saw so many people with that exclusive jersey that you made with the Expo. Despite the fact that it's actually our, our baseball team that actually retired, for I us know. it's an emblem, right? So, right. Yeah. So I actually grew up born and raised uh, not too far from here in New York, so it was like a three hour drive. I've been to an Expos, Expos game, I've been to the stadium, um, and it kind of just felt right knowing that like Montreal, baseball, I know how much you guys probably missed having the Expos there. We do, we do. But yeah, um, yeah it just made sense, and like also I owed you guys a jersey because last time I came here for my Impact show, um, there was a hiccup with the customs. It's like unfortunately really hard to get merch in here, so we, we spent extra time and care to make sure that these landed for uh, the people of Il Sonique. That's amazing. As well, uh, we wanted to talk of uh, your upcoming shows that you have that are coming up next week, Base Canyon? Yeah, yeah. big one. Yeah, Base excited? Canyon. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's like, when you think of like the big dubstep festivals, you have to throw Base Canyon in there. Um, a lot of people travel from all over the country, the world actually. Uh, Lost Lands, Base Canyon, Excision just kind of decided to be the guy who's gonna throw the best dubstep festivals. And now, I mean, Il Sonique is probably, I would put that in top top three for sure for dubstep just because how knowledgeable and crazy the fans go here in Montreal for dubstep. They're still the most insane like fans and educated fans and every time they just blow your expectations away. That's amazing. As well as um, we heard uh, through the vines that we have uh, an event, well there's an event actually that's going to be happening, Mammoth Mountain? Oh yeah, uh, in two weeks I'm going to Denver, we're doing a two day event. Wow. Mammoth Mountain 2, we did one last time in Denver. I like to try to find like something that's a little bit less conventional when it comes to like playing the same venues that everyone plays. There's kind of like a, you know, you play this venue, you play the next venue, you play the bigger one. And it's like usually pretty scripted, but I wanted to find something that was like out in the wilderness on the side of the mountain. It's 12,000 feet up in the sky on the side of a ski mountain and we're throwing a dubstep show there. Because you, act, you did that recently as well, like a couple of months back, right? Where it was like by a, by a, a river and everything. Right, right, right. So that was probably you're thinking of Mammoth Mountain One. Okay. Uh, we did that, and it was a place called the Mishawaka Amphitheater. It was smaller. Uh, it was really fun. Another two-day event. Colorado just has really, really nice, pretty mountain sides and like uh, places to do these. So if you find any mountains nearby in Montreal, <laughs> I'm all ears because I would love to do a Mammoth Mountain here. I guess we should be expecting maybe Wooly at Mont Tremblant. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, a few uh, local producers were actually asking as well how the way you, um, what's your process as to when you tackle a song? I remember we had spoken about this maybe like a couple of years back. You told me like the way you approach it's kind of like a video game, right? Right, yeah. I come from a video game background. I was a competitive video game player. So uh, it's like once you learn a video game or like in this case a software and you're like you have kind of a, an addictive personality like me, like you just kind of like you just want to be on the game or in this case it's an ableton it's my dog choice um so i just want to be like you always find new things it's like you'll never like beat the game so like that's like what's that that like chase you're always like chasing like yeah. the dragon there where yeah. you'll never be done learning you'll never be done being better so it's like really really addictive so i guess you kind of like see it like a world of warcraft kind of thing i have a terrible world of War world of warcraft and diablo <laughs> addiction so but luckily i've i've cut it cold turkey the last couple months and randomly my production is like 
I've just been making more tunes. I don't know how that happened. That's amazing. Also, um, another question that uh, some people were asking is how the way, um, you know, because of course from like traveling, producing and all that, what is actually like some some things that you do like a hobby that's on the side that you know just to like unwind just to remember that you know you're adam you know right. and just go back to being a human um i think it's important to keep in touch with your family if you have a, a close family friends obviously i like to um i hired like a personal trainer to just like keep me like accountable and like you know i have to go into the gym no matter what when i get back and like he doesn't give a shit what i did over the weekend he's just you know just don't eat eat like an asshole. Yeah, you but, still you still do those hikings with Kill the Noise. Yeah, so we go up to this place called uh, Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles, where we both live, and we'll go and we'll hike up to the top, and hike back down, and we just kind of we we were actually both born and raised in Rochester, New York. That's where I'm from, and that's where he's from. So it's like three hours from here, um, pretty easy drive, but we've always been like pretty close, and it's just like I said, just like finding time. To disconnect is so important otherwise you just get so like wrapped up in this and it's like definitely it's easy to like kind of lose yourself and mental health can take a toll sometimes definitely there's a lot does. of pressure involved with this industry and there's a lot of like you know social media is never really a fun game to play but you have to play it if you want to like you know take this career seriously so so i'll find the balance for you and whatever works for you if social media is not your thing have people help you out there Luckily, it's never really been like too much of an issue for myself, so I don't mind it. But yeah, just finding ways to disconnect is probably my biggest tip to like balancing the weekend versus the highs of the weekend, and then just going back to reality during the week. Definitely, definitely. Also, um, a lot of people were actually asking because they wanted me to show you this video, okay? And they I'm wanted scared. me to tell you. I'm no, very they scared. wanted to ask me. I'm terrified. How they actually like? How do you feel when I sh if we show you this one video? Okay? What are you gonna show me? You ready? Oh my god, I already know what that is. That's Lay Belmont, my first time I played Lockdown there. So tell us actually what are the like what <laughs> Alright, so literally like five minutes ago, yeah. I was walking from the stage back to the green room right before coming here, and we were with Lays. She's on our uh, our roster for our management team. And she's like, that's crazy. Like, you know, we're like, listen, Montreal is just like different breed. It's like, I remember, I will always remember the time when I was like, oh, I have to play Montreal. I've never been there. Okay. Played Lay Belmont. And then I played. It was me and Trivacta playing on my tour. And like you saw, there was like barely any production. It's just a room. Yeah. It, and yeah. I played that, I think it was my opening song was Lockdown because I just either made it or just came out very yeah. close to that. And I could not believe, I've, I mean, I've never experienced anything like that before. Like, there's always been like, you know, you play support and like, you know, they in the States and you'll like play great crowds, but it's not that. It's never that. And I was like, I couldn't like describe. I just remember calling my agent right after. I was like, that was the best show I've ever played in my life. He's like, really? He's like, yes. Like, you don't understand showed him the video is like okay okay and I'm like we gotta like figure out how to keep on coming back to Montreal doing a little bit bigger these guys are just they're built different like educational like they, they know every song they know every wub lyric they know like every artist who's like underground who's a little bit more mainstream they just they love it all and also you guys have crazy talent here yourself there's like I've made a song with Stone Level, Stone Level. Uh, well, having Izzy Vadim here on my last show was insane. He's just like, you guys just have incredible talent here too. So it's just like, there's the whole like debate, like, oh, who's the base capital? It's like Denver, and like, yeah, okay, I get it. I love Denver in the United States, sure. Yeah. But like of the like world, I still have never found anything quite like Montreal. It's just like completely different, and Denver will probably hate me. But like, I they just have to come here. Like, well, of just course, like of just course. travel out here, yeah. experience it. And the thing is like. Denver will always have the numbers. There'll be a Red Rock show, and then that will sell out, and then like Mission Ballroom will sell out, which are 10,000 and 5,000 cap rooms, or like or 3,000 cap rooms. And like maybe Montreal doesn't have like the quite the like, the, like just the sheer amount of numbers of people here, but like the quality of the fan, which is so important, especially to me, is just like blows anything out of the water. That's amazing. We have a little bit of time left actually for the interview. We just want to ask you: Is there any upcoming? releases collaborations that we should be expecting yeah from you? i've actually like had this weird i've always had like 
unreleased tunes just like ready to go but like recently I've just been making a lot of random stuff too so like I have a couple tunes with Subtronics that we still need to put out um, we just almost finished Island our like follow up to Island with Seven Lines and Trivecta um, so we're just working on a vocal right now it's sounding great always doing stuff with Excision he's just like one of my best friends um, I have a tune with Sudden Death who's playing right now as Void um, I have a tune with Stone Level I still need to put out. That's my fault. I need to put it out. <laughs> I was, like, trying to, like, figure out if, like, if I should, like, do an album or not. So I've been going back and forth on that. And if if I do the album, it'll, that will definitely be on it. Um, my team has been crushing, like, um, finding, like, samples that we I had that I didn't think were going to be, like, available to, like, clear and, like, actually put out. Mm -hmm. So if you know, like, the iconic uh, vocal from Levels, the a Ada James song, like, yes. oh, yes. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. We actually I got, got that clear. So, like, I always had it in the song with a collab with uh, Tate B, yeah. this new, like, uh, old school style dubstep yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. And I always just threw it in there just because we didn't have a vocalist, and I was like, man, I'm starting to really, really get comfortable with this vocal on here. Like, I don't think I can hear it any other way. And they got it cleared. I was like, are you kidding me? Really? So, like, that's going to come out soon. Um, some more melodic stuff. I've definitely found a little bit more interest in, like, the wubbier, wonkier, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's not quite, like, wook-based stuff, but it's, like, definitely more, like, wonkier style stuff. And it's just kind of a nice little break from just, like, the break your face on the rail type stuff that you're kind of more used to hearing so that's amazing i'm having a lot of fun finding all different new like spots and dubs that i can go to that's amazing well actually this is the end of the interview i wanted to thank you and before we actually end this is there anything that you wanted to share with everyone in that montreal uh just thank you guys for being you guys um it is always the most anticipated show whenever i come to montreal and shout out headbangers du quebec you guys have always been like a cool little community that I can go to and know that you guys will always be there. So I'm stoked to see what comes next for uh, for all of us together. Perfect. Thank you so much, Willie. Of course.